Okay, so you guys saw my previous video where I went over uh, a program that emulates the game of life. Well, in this quick tutorial, or rather just an explanation, um, I'm going to go over precisely what the game of life is and what it does for us. So, without further ado, what exactly is Conway's game of life? Well, first off, uh, we need a little bit of background knowledge as to what each of the little cells are. The game of life is based off of a concept called cellular automata, uh, which uh, consists of a regular grid of cells, each in one of a finite number of states, such as on and off. In my previous video, I went over immigration, which includes an extra state. Um, so there's off, on, and then like on to or something like that. So blue, red, whatever you want to call it. But for the default game of life, uh, it just uses two states, on and off. So you want to pay attention to this really quick uh, because this is what all my examples are going to be based off of. On is uh, filled in with black, off is filled in with white. So now that we understand what cellular automata is, being a grid of cells, um, if you've taken any sort of math, you'll, under you'll know what a grid is. So just like a regular Cartesian grid. So, and each of those little boxes on a typical sheet of graphing paper is considered a cell. So what happens if we make a grid and then we add rules that govern what cells can be, which cells can be on or off? Well, first you need to understand what a neighborhood is. A neighborhood in this context is considered a Moore neighborhood invented by someone named Moore, probably. Uh, which looks like this, where the home cell is in the middle, indicated by the white, and its neighbor cells are in within a one cell distance from the home cell. So you can see that this is one cell away, one cell away, etc, etc. So let's start a simulation with a rule that I just made up off the top of my head. A cell needs at least two neighbors to stay on, to stay on, during the next iteration, or generation, whatever you want to call it. These iterations are done synchronously, which means that we don't kill or birth cells as we iterate, meaning that we do not change the grid we are working on, but rather we just transpose it onto a new grid. Each cell is updated using the rules are transferred to a new grid. This is shown on the next slide. So here we've got our starting generation, just a random grid of cells I filled up. So then let's just go over this. So does the cell have two neighbors? Well, there's one on neighbor. These neighbors are off, so no, it only has one cell. So it does not move forward to the next generation. Uh, this one does not, and this one does not. But you'll notice we have this little intermediate thing right here. This is to show you that just because this is now off, we know we still consider this to have two neighbors because we don't consider this to be off uh, while we're moving it. Once we've moved it all, however, you'll notice that these are now off, but these have stayed on. So what? Basically, by adding rules, we can create interesting and unique behavior. Uh, there are quite a few sets of rules uh, using cellular automata, but the ones that we will focus on, again, is Conway's Game of Life. It tends to create very interesting patterns. So why is it called that? Well, it kind of uh, it kind of emulates life in a sense, and there's four simple rules: any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies, as if by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three uh, live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. So here's a quick example. So again, we have that same thing that we did earlier. So this cell only has one neighbor, so it's going to die, as if by underpopulation, as marked by the red X. But now we move on to the next cell. Well, look at that. There's three neighbors, exactly three on neighbors which means that this cell now becomes alive, indicated by the red check mark. 
So then we go over here, only one li live neighbor, so it doesn't come alive, etc. This one has uh, two live neighbors, so it, so it moves on to the next generation. This one has four live neighbors, which means it does not come alive. This one has one, meaning it dies, etc., etc. So then we get this shape. Well, this is what it does, is that this is the first, then we apply the rules, then we transpose. So let's continue the generation. So this is the previous generation we were looking at. Let's apply the rules. I actually messed up here. This cell should have died. This cell should have died. This cell would have stayed alive. This cell would have stayed alive. And this cell would have died. So that's a mistake on my part, so ignore this. The previous one was correct, however. So what? If we, program if we programmatically add these rules and create a larger grid, even more interesting things begin to happen, because we have more data. We can get several different forms of still life and active life. Still life meaning it does not change from generation to generation, and active life meaning it has a repeating pattern. So here's the previous generation in a grid that I set up and I um, executed. So you'll see these, uh, this grid, then we'll look at the next grid. Well, it looks like this bit has stayed the same, this bit has stayed the same. These are forms of still life. But you'll notice that these vertical bars have now turned horizontal. That is a form of active life because this one has exactly three neighbors, this one has exactly three neighbors, this one has one neighbor. So then it becomes horizontal, and it just repeats. So I already went over this, but I'll go over it again. It took place on a larger grid. There are several still life patterns, and active life patterns, with a repeating pattern. That is very important. So that's actually about it. That's the game of life in a nutshell. Um, in summation, the game of life has a set of rules that we follow by using more neighborhoods and we update it from generation to generation synchronously on a Cartesian grid, basically graph paper. So thanks for watching and I will begin the next tutorial sometime this week that actually begins uh, going over the programming side of things. So have a nice day.